Um, first of all, team news for tomorrow? We will see today. Uh, we are training this afternoon. We'll see today how everybody is. Um, you got a little bit of criticism last week for playing a false nine um, without going with a, a main striker, which you haven't done this season up until last week. Um, how do you respond to that? And will you be doing the same thing tomorrow? That criticism is part of the job and normally comes uh, when you lose. So we all know that. How do you see this tie? I mean, you've home this season, your former last couple of rounds anyway, beaten by Olympiacos, the draw with Slavia Prague. You've got to get it right tomorrow at home. Time to change it. Um, we have to embrace the challenge, the opportunity we have ahead. I think it's um, the tenth time that the club is in a European semi-final, so it doesn't happen very often. So we have to take the opportunity tomorrow and, and earn the right to be in the final. Is Pierre Emerick Aubameyang and Kieran Tierney Kieran are they likely to start? Let's see today how everybody is in training. Ian. Okay, one last one from me. You also got Man City into the Champions League final. Chelsea. A well placed to join them. You think the Man United are going to make the Europa League final? Your hope is, like two years ago, we're going to have a full house for the Premier League, yeah? I think that would be a really good sign to, for our football. Cheers, Mikhail. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. We'll go to Darmesh from Sky. Hi, good morning, Mikhail. Um, morning. There's so much talk surrounding Arsenal this week. Um, Daniel X says he wants the best for Arsenal. Is the public nature of his takeover bid helpful, given it's the biggest match of your season? We have to try um, to be away from all the rumours and everything that is um, happening around the club and uh, focus on the pitch because the best way to help the club to be in the best possible position is um, to win football matches and be competitive at the highest level. Have you spoken to anybody involved in this takeover bid? No. And have the, the Cronky family been in touch with you at all this week? They've been in touch um, with us in the last week or so and in a really convincing way, as I said already last week. Can you just put into context, how big is this game for you personally, for the club, short term and long term? It's... Um... It's a massive game for everybody, but in particular for the club, because we are here representing a football club and our fans. And what we want to do is do it the best way, winning trophies. And if we win tomorrow, we'll be much closer to get um, another trophy. And this is the only aim and the purpose that's why we are here. Just finally for me, Mikel, does this dictate this game and, and, and the winning or not of the Europa League, what you can do in the summer? I don't know, difficult to respond to that. What I'm going to say is that winning always helps uh, for the future. It's the best way to prepare anything for the future. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Thanks, Amish. Go to George Cummins from the BBC. Thanks, Dan. Hello, Mikel. Um, how often do you speak to the Cronkies? It seems like you talk to them regularly. <laughs> often enough and... Uh, and the rest, uh, B19, Edu, they do it as well really often. So there is a really good um, communication line. Okay, good. Um, just in terms of that game last week, that away goal was absolutely huge, wasn't it? It is always really important. Um, we didn't get the result that we wanted, obviously, but um, with the context and the situation that happened during the game, um, we got out of that situation in a pretty good way considering again the circumstances and playing for 40 minutes with with 10 men. A couple of weeks ago I asked you about some comments Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher made about Aubameyang and um, I just wondered it, after what he's been through and his performance on Sunday do you think they was a bit harsh looking back on some of the stuff they said about him? Uh, again, uh, they are all the time free to talk. Uh, my job, my responsibility is to protect our place and try to get the maximum out of it. Obviously, we know certain things that uh, the outside world doesn't know and um, and they can comment, but sometimes without really knowing all the details, which is a little bit unfair sometimes for the external people. And we make decisions that sometimes people are judging, but without really knowing the detail. And uh, that criticism is, is part of our job. And how is he after Sunday? He played well, didn't he? 
he played well and he felt much better than the, the days before that. Obviously, scoring a goal, it's um, really important for him as well. So he's in a good place. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, George. We'll go to Nick Callow from Haters. Hi, Mikel. Just a quick question about the supporters, if I may. Um, before the last home match, there was a large gathering of fans, very peaceful, well-natured protests against the owners. They're planning to have another protest tomorrow night before the match. But some supporters are arguing after what happened at Man United, they should cancel it in case it has a negative effect on the players in such a big game. What would your message be to supporters planning to come down to the stadium? I think that uh, they have to be able to express themselves. And um, if it's done in a pacific way, um, they have the right to do it. We will try to prepare the game the best possible way. I wouldn't like to, to use any excuses um, if something happens um, with that. I know that the only purpose of the fans is to defend the club and they want the best for the team. And we will try to do the same. Would it give the players a lift to see the, the, the fans cheering them in as they come in on the coach? I think that would be great. Uh, we'll be missing them so much. We need them. And uh, if the players and the team feel that uh, they are right behind them, supporting them, again, I think it's the 10th time that the club is playing a European semi-final. So it's a big moment for us. So hopefully we can we can have them closer than, than we had already in the last few months. OK, let's see how it goes. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thanks, Nick. We'll go to Mark Manbryant from PA, please. Morning, Miguel. Morning. Um, you're still a young manager. Um, you've already won the FA Cup, but given what's attached to the match tomorrow in terms of winning another trophy and taking the club back to the Champions League, is this the biggest match of your managerial career so far? Well, it's a big moment, uh, again, not for me, but uh, for the club, for everything that has happened in the last uh, two years, in the last months, uh, all the instability that we've been uh, hit with for many different reasons. So... I think it will be really important and a big step forward um, if we are able to be in that final and have the opportunity to win that trophy. Is it acceptable for a club the size of Arsenal to spend five years out of the Champions League? It's their reality. Um, it's not what we want, obviously, but uh, there are a lot of things that have happened in that period for many reasons. One is because the level is being raised uh, to a standard that is unprecedented in this league. And um, we are not the only club that has been out of that. But obviously, no one accepts that situation. Um, and we want to, to change it straight away. And, and this season, we still have the opportunity to do that. Do you think the, the result tomorrow, if it's positive or negative, would basically determine whether you've had a successful season or not? Well, it would be just like this, that's for sure. Um, how good of a job you are doing... Um, is determined by many factors, um, but different people. Uh, external is only when you win or lose. That's the defining moment. Great. Good luck tomorrow, Mikhail. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. We'll go to James Olley from ESPN. Hi, Mikhail. Um, just wanted to ask you about the left back situation. Since Kieran got injured, there's been very little rotation in that area. It, it, has that been to give Granite the best chance of adapting to a role that's not his natural position? It's been one of the reasons as well, because the way we wanted to play and, um, and the players around, um, because we were managed, we have managed to get some clean sheets as well since being playing there, something that didn't happen for 13 games. And uh, he gave us something different to the team. Cedric had a run in the team in January and February, but he's only played three games, I think, since the middle of February. What does he need to do to force his way back in? Well, it's been a little bit unfortunate because um, he played some good games as a right back as well. And then we have the injury of, um, of Kieran. He played some as a left back. Then we were training the left back and we could have given more opportunities. But it's true that Callum came on as well and, um, and did really well. Thank you. James Bench. Uh, hi, Mikhail. You mentioned the clean sheets there, um, but you, you haven't had one at home, I believe, since January the 30th. What do you put your team's difficulties defending, particularly at the Emirates, down to? There have been many factors. Um, errors has been one of the main ones. We considered um, some set pieces as well. Um, and not much. Teams without creating much, they have managed to, to score a goal. 
yeah, you mentioned the the errors there. I think it's it's fourteen errors leading to shots, eight eight leading to goals in the Premier League and and Europa League. How hard is it to coach that out of players? I would say almost impossible. That's part of the football, and mistakes are part of uh, any sport. And I think it's the hardest thing to coach. Okay, thank you. Okay, Simon Collins from Evening Standard. Hi, Mikel. Um, Hi. Is there any update on on David Luiz and and how long he could be out for? No, he was feeling better yesterday. Let's see how he's um, today. So um, we don't know yet the extent of the injury. Is, is there a chance he could play tomorrow? With David, uh, it's always possible because uh, he wants to. He was already saying before the game that he wanted to be available. Um, he's made uh, an incredible effort to be in the position that he is today. And, and the fact that he played against Newcastle was already a big bonus uh, because he had um, a surgery in the knee. And uh, with David, you never know. And just on Pierre, we, we you, you touched on a bit there. He's obviously had a very difficult season, you know, contracting malaria, his mother being ill. But how much do you feel with everything that's gone on, the stage is, is set for him tomorrow night to, you know, turn this season into, into a brilliant one and one that we remember for the right reasons? This game gives you always another opportunity. And if you are there and you are ready for the taking, um, you can turn things uh, around really quickly. So hopefully we can see that tomorrow. And just the last one, the summer's obviously coming up. There's players whose loans will be ending, players apparently leaving the club possibly. How much should an incentive be for the players that this could be the last chance as a group they win a trophy playing for Arsenal? Well, I don't want to think like that. I want to think that uh, they always have the hunger to to win any competition and they are involved. It's true that for some players, it might be the last season for different uh, reasons. And um, I can see how much it means for them, how much they want it. And um, and hopefully we can do that tomorrow. Thanks, Pacquiao. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. Now a question from Spanish media. Um, Javi Mata from Radio Villarreal. Hi, Javi. Hola, Miguel. Buenos días. Uh, eh, conociéndote a ti y conociendo tu idea y la del Villarreal, quiero preguntarte una... Football. What kind of match are you expecting? We're expecting a very open, intense game with plenty of goals. What are you expecting from Villarreal? Do you think they're going to try and hang back and wait for you to come onto them, given that they are 2-1 up at the moment? I'm not sure how they're preparing for the game. I think uh, we spoke about this before the first leg, and obviously we conceded a an early goal, and that changed the game. And then there was a second one from a set place as well. We then had to play for 40 minutes with 10 men. We'll see what happens. We have an idea of what they might try to do, and we know what we want to do in order to get through. And then, of course, uh, there are many games within the game tomorrow. Thanks, Javi. We'll go to Ivan Camilo. I wanted to ask you what you think the keys are if you're going to turn the tie around and get through to the final. We need to play better than we did in Villarreal. We're going to start with uh, 11 players, something that we didn't have a chance to do in the last game. And then we'll see what happens. There'll be many factors that come into it.